we're going to do some work on Madison's sacroiliac joints here. And uh, what happens a lot of times is you'll have an ilia here that is rotated in the anterior direction. There's some debate about this, but I tend to believe that you could pick that up by just looking at leg length discrepancies. And in that case, that will make the rotated ilia make that, in, that leg appear longer when you look at it from this position. And then that's usually reconfirmed when you go up here to the ASISs and notice that one is lower than the other. Now Madison actually does have that occurring on the right side and she has a little bit of a scoliosis so that's, that's something that's, that's going to be the result of her scoliosis which we're not going to permanently change but we can take a little bit of pressure off of that. Sometimes it has to do with the ilia here, the iliacus muscle being too tight. I'm going to come in here on the inside of this ilia. This is never a very comfortable place to be pressed on but um, applying this pressure can actually inhibit that muscle. So I'm just going in, applying deep pressure inhibition. A little tight there, you probably feel that. And sometimes you can tell if one side is holding versus the other by comparing it to the other side, since it's never very pleasant to be pressed there, it's usually uncomfortable. If you compare that to the other side, you get a sense of what's normal and the client does as well. In this case, Madison happens to be a pretty good subject because I can feel there, that one's not quite as tight. Now, I don't know about you, Madison, right? So people come in like this and nobody's ever came in and said, you know what, I have a problem with this muscle, but they're usually surprised when we find that it is a problem. So we can do deep pressure inhibition through here. It might take five or 10 minutes, but as you do that, you're gonna find that the muscle will, will release, and as that releases, that allows the pelvis to rotate in this direction. So we would want to start our treatment with that, just so we're not fighting muscle. That may be enough to correct it, but probably not. And so we would add a muscle energy technique. In this case, <clears throat> I want to use Madison's um, um, thigh musculature. I want to use um, her muscles on the posterior side to create the rotation and vice versa in the front. So we're gonna go up here, Madison, I want you to keep your knees right there and I'm gonna push in to this knee this way, resist me, okay? I'm gonna push this one that way, resist me there. Don't let me move you. Push, 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 push. Good, and then we're gonna rest. So we're doing that to create a rotation in her pelvis. It would be the opposite if we were trying to create the rotation over here. Push, push, push. So it is important that you get it right. In, a, in other words, if we were doing the opposite, we would be making her problem worse. So we do want to make sure that we're instilling a posterior rotation on her right side by using her right hip extensors and left hip flexors. If you're having her do this at home, you would want to make sure that she's doing it right. In that case, Madison, I'm going to have you um, pick your hips up off the table and then just like that. Now I want you to bring this knee up, which is not easy to do, and push there, push, 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 push. So now she's doing it with the right foot down. And, and again, if you were giving her a picture of this, you would wanna make sure that the picture had the correct foot down. And that's not always the case in our home exercise pro. So something you might wanna look at, and um, we may even wanna shoot another video of but that's just a gentle way we can cause a, a rotation at the SI joint. <clears throat> the pelvis also connects in the, in the middle, in the pubic symphysis. To get that to relocate, Madison, I'm gonna have you squeeze. So that did not move in her case. If it did, I would have heard a click and you would have felt a click in your pubic symphysis. And, and oftentimes it, it does. But we had no movement occur there, so I'm gonna try a traction technique. Now, Madison's pretty light. If I was really doing this in real life, I might have her actually put a treatment gown on that opened to the back so that her skin could be um, touching this naga hide and that would keep her from sliding. I'm trying to protect her knee right here, but you can feel that traction. When I do this traction, Madison, would you say that feels better, worse, or about the same? About the same. Okay, good. So if it felt worse, I would not 
do the rest of this treatment, but is it okay if I give this a tug and you might feel a little bit of movement occur with that? Now this is one that's not gonna create any noise most likely, but you may feel some joint movement when I do that. So I just want you to relax and, and then as you relax, I just give that a nice little tug there, okay? So relax, take a big breath and out. So the second time I got it in, and you know what, that just shows you what a bad clinician I was. Um, I snuck that first one in on her and she wasn't expecting it, and it didn't work. The, once she figured out what I was trying to do, she trusts me enough to relax and let me pull. She exhaled, she knew what was going on, she let go enough to allow me to mobilize that spine. So really, I, should, uh, I shouldn't have surprised you on the first one, all right? And it, just, a good, just a good note, that hardly ever works with patients. You're better off letting them get to know what to expect, and then they will eventually let you stretch them a little bit more aggressively. And because of that, you know, this kind of brings up a point that I try to explain to people. I don't pull on people as much as I used to. Number one, it wears out your body, it hurts your joints and everything. We have machines for that. And people will relax with a machine more than they do a human because machines are predictable, right? So if, if I had, if, if somebody reached up and tried to tickle me, that's an unpredictable force, and so I'm gonna be guarded. But if they used a stick or something mechanical, all of a sudden that's not ticklish. So for the same reason, when we're doing hands-on techniques, there are certain things that simply work better when the person does it positionally or when we do it by machine. And because of that, if you know, we don't have to be pulling on people at all times. The exception is some of those quick stretches that we actually have to, but a low sustained stretch should be um, positional in nature, should be gravity induced, should be machine induced. Uh, we don't have to stand there and pull on somebody for 15 minutes anymore, unless they have you know, some um, apprehension about machine technology. Madison, go ahead and squeeze here again. Good. So that's just to, to mobilize the pelvis. And then, um, you know, there's another one actually where we're going to bend like this. Good. And I'm going to move you to about right there. Good. And I want you to put your hands behind you like you were going to, there you go, just like you're going to do a sit up like that, okay, and then raise forward like that, please. Good, and then I'm gonna rotate you here. Well, I picked a good subject, that you were easy to rotate. And try to relax here. This is a good one to see on, on YouTube as well, but if I'm trying to mobilize that pelvis, I'm gonna have you take a big breath, Madison, and then out, and then we can just give that, it's a down, and inferior glide one more time, and then out. Feeling okay with that? Mm -hmm. And of course I could use more force, but that's just for general purposes. So those are the supine pelvic mobilizations.